Keep that applause going for Kevin. Come on. Sometimes the smallest gesture can have the biggest impact. On March 7th, 2006, my mother, Patty, turned 62 years old. And Patty was a, a funny little red-haired lady, a uh, sweet little cat lady, uh, just funny, intelligent. And uh, even though we fought like mothers and sons do, we genuinely liked and loved each other. Now, the thing that was unique about this specific birthday was that we knew beyond a shadow of a doubt that it was going to be her last. A few months earlier, she had been diagnosed as terminal, given six months to a year left to live. She asked me to come home and help her through it. I put my life on indefinite hold. I turned down a dream job that I had worked really hard to get, but I came home and lived with her for what would ultimately be her final five months. Now, the thing about last birthdays is they come with a little bit of pressure that you really want to do it right, and I really wanted to make this birthday perfect for her. So uh, one of the things about Patty was that she lived by herself for 17 years. Once I moved out when I was 18, uh, she was on her own for a long time, and there weren't a lot of people in her life to listen to her. So the thing that I wanted to do for her was just listen to everything and try to figure out what the best birthday gift was going to be. For instance, one day we were in Target, and we were in the stationary aisle, and we, she picked up a silver fountain pen and said, I used to teach English, and I loved buying a silver fountain pen every year. She had a smile on her face when she said this, so I made a, ha-ha, this might be a good birthday present. So I bought one, and then I thought, a $12 fountain pen for someone's last birthday is lame. <laughs> so I tossed it in a drawer and forgot about it because I had the epiphany of, I need to make something by hand. So one Saturday morning, I drove to a Michael's craft store with no idea what I was going to get, and I got really stoned in the parking lot. And then I went inside, and I discovered scrapbooking. And I just bought $100 worth of materials. I went home. I locked myself in my room. I went through 35 years' worth of photographs. And when I emerged, I had in my possession, and not to have Trump-like levels of hyperbole right now, but the greatest <laughs> scrapbook ever made. So her birthday arrives, and it's going great. We do everything that her heart desires. I take her to go visit a bunch of her friends. We go to her favorite restaurant. We go to the beach. We pick up seashells. And she loves the scrapbook as much as I hoped she would. Our last stop of the day is a bookstore because she wants to see a local author talk about his book. And right as we're about to walk in, I get a phone call from an old friend of mine and because I, uh, I really want to take this call, she goes in the bookstore by herself and I take the call. Now, it was my old friend, Matt, who's also a coworker, and he had called to give me some inside information, which was the dream job that I had turned down to come home was still holding the spot for me for one more week. Now, this job is nothing, but at the time it was the biggest thing for me because it was four months in Europe on someone else's dime performing comedy shows. And for me, that was the biggest thing I had at this point, and I so badly wanted it However, for me to take it, my mother had to die. But I didn't want my mother to die. So therefore, I was stuck at home. So I found myself in this weird Mobius strip. And I had to tell him that I can't take that job. And even though I knew it, I, I had trouble accepting it. You know those times in your life where something's bothering you and you could feel it percolating and it starts to get worse and worse? And I start to... Everything about this, the fact that I'm living at home, all these things going on start to get to me. So when we get in the car, Patty asks me, what's wrong? And I tell her about the phone call with Matt. And then suddenly and slowly but surely, I start to have a breakdown. And I start to say how this is so unfair. And how this is, this is bullshit. And I hate this so much. And I feel like everything is being taken away from me. And I feel like it, once this is all over, I have to start over again. And during this breakdown, I was completely unconscious. And I ended it with... I just want my life back. To which Patty, who had 16 weeks left to live, said to me in a tone I will never forget, so do I, Kevin. So do I. And it was in that moment I regretted everything I said because her last birthday, which I had worked so hard on, was now ruined. But she was very cool about it. And as I'm sitting there just breaking down in the passenger seat as we're driving home, she's very cool about it and starts to say how much she does understand. And she sees where I'm coming from. And she lets me talk it out and get all this stuff out of me that had been pent up because I'd been putting on a real smiley face every time before this. 
I mean, she's very kind to me, but it's still, I've ruined this birthday, and now this is what the birthday's about. We get back to the house, and everything's better, but I'm still pissed at myself, and I walk in my room, I sit down at my desk, and I slam the desk in frustration, pissed at myself, and then the, door, the drawer opens up ever so slightly. And I look inside, and I see a little rectangular box that I'd forgotten about. I grab it and I walk in the living room and I thank her again for listening to me and I apologize for just what I had done. And I handed her the box and when she opened it, and when she saw the silver fountain pen inside, tears immediately came to her eyes and she said, thank you, Kevin. You listened to me. You listened to me and you heard what I said. It's been a long time since anyone's listened to me. And we hugged, and during it, I reminded her that we were in this together. And even though I had come close to ruining her birthday, because we had listened to each other and heard what the other had to say, her last birthday was, as I hoped it would be, perfect. Thank you very much. (laughs) 